Happy New Year, folks. I uh, hope you all had a nice evening last night. So, first fly of the year. I did a video a wee while back on duo fishing, and I just thought I'd share this little pattern with me. Because I use barbless hooks all the time, sometimes when I'm fishing New Zealand style, my tippet just comes away. So, what I do to alleviate that is add a little bit of a loop in the back here. So, if you didn't see the uh, duo fishing video, I'll stick a little link up there, and you might want to check out after you've watched this. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Now you can use a number of different hooks for this fly, but I'm using the uh, H390 barbless hook in size 10. It's a clink hammer hook and it's on a fine wire. Now the fine wire is going to help me out because obviously I'm using this fly primarily to fish a small nymph under. So that's why I've got the fine wire hook in. The thread I'm going to be using is uh, from Vivas. This is the GSP. It's at 30 denier and it's just a white thread so as always with this stuff before I do anything else I'm going to get a little bit of super glue just onto the shank of the hook and if you're new to the channel uh, I do this all the time when I'm using the Beavis because I just find it is much easier uh, and more secure than using wax so I just want to get a little bit of thread down Especially with these types of patterns, you don't want your dressing rotating around the hook shank. So just take my waist off there. Next, I'm going to add my loop, and what I'm using for the loop is some of this stuff. Now, uh, it's pink and yellow, and what this is is the, the real two-tone indicator. And basically, I've taken a small section off. Uh, and I'm going to use the, the yellow for this. And I'll just take a bit away. I'm not going to throw that pink away because that's going to come in handy for a fly that I'll show you next week. So I'll just put that to the side. And what I want to do is bend my tippet over. Like so, to make a little loop. And then I'm going to dress it up to the hook. And then I'm going to start getting a few wraps down on it. Get it to the length I want. Like so. Now, you might have seen some clink hammer flies that have a small... Um, ring off the back and that's simply the same sort of theory only I'm saving the money and just using the tippet material. I've never had any of these give in on me. They tend to be pretty solid once they're tied in with the rest of the material. So I'm going to remove that tippet section and next I'm going to tie in my ribbon. I'm going to be using the P01 Vivas. Uh, it's a pearl lurex type material and I've already got a little bit off here which I'm going to catch in. I hope uh, you're not suffering too badly from the festivities last night. Uh, I think for many of us, it'll have been a quiet affair. Mine certainly was. So, I've, I've secured that ribbon and I've just run a bed of thread up there uh, while I was chatting. And what I want to do next is grab my body material. And what I'm using here is the the, the tried and trusted trout stalkers. This is the boosted natural. Uh, still, still one of my favourite dubbins. And I'm just going to take a small amount of that and dub it on to my th thread or silk, if you like. Yeah. So it was a, it was a bit of a conundrum, really. What fly to? Tie is the first one for 2021 and uh, I had a few well I've got a list actually and I just thought I quite fancy doing this because this time of year I'm generally tying quite a lot of bugs for the grayling and uh, kind of dry flies and this sort of stuff gets left behind so I've just dubbed that on I'm just going to ease that up to the start now before I come up 
I just want to make sure that that tippet material is going nowhere. So I'm just going to add a little bit of super glue over the top of my wraps. And then when I wrap this over, that'll all be hidden. Like so, and I want to bring it up to just as about the thorax area. I'm going to just remove that wee bit that I've just got too much on. And then I can come around with my rib and then work that up the body. And I'm looking for uh, between three and four turns. I'm going to get four out of this one, but this one on top you'll not see once the wings are down. And then I'll catch that in. I mean, don't get me wrong, it is a rare thing when uh, you're fishing dual New Zealand style and the uh, your tippet with your nymph comes off, but it does happen on occasion and uh, it can be quite frustrating. So sometimes when I am fishing New Zealand style, I just like to have this little aid, if you like. Next then, there's, a, there's quite a, a series going on with the wings. So first of all, I'm going to add some CDC. This is the Troutline Ultra Select, and it's in a sandy grey colour. Now, the reason I'm putting the, uh, the CDC down first is it's the most natural material, and it just presents to the fish better, I think. Uh, I've got four plumes here. It's lovely stuff to work with this, because when you take it out of the packet, it's mostly lined up for you, so you're not messing about trying to marry it up. So I'm just going to line that up and I want it coming just off the back of the hook in line with my loop really. So I'll pinch down with my thumb and forefinger on my left hand and I'm going to come over and just catch that in several turns. I can lift the remainder out the way, get a couple of turns in front and then come in with my snips and remove the waste. Now, normally I would stash that to the side and use this for dubbing, but I'm just going to discard it at the moment so as not to get in the way. Right, the next part of the wing then is some of this stuff and uh, you can use whatever you like. This is from Fish On and it's uh, ultra dry yarn. I've, I've really started to use this for almost all my dry flies now. Um, I used to like aero wing, but it's it's extremely expensive, so I've switched to this. It's just as good, and it's a little bit cheaper. So what I'm doing is I'm just combing it out. I don't want the whole bulk of it, but I do want to take maybe three quarters of the fibres. So I'll just now I've combed it. It's much easier for me to to pick out what I want. And then I can cut this just to where I need it. Okay, so far so good. Now, when I dress this up, I don't want it to extend past the CDC tips. So when I show it up like so, I can hold it in and then two or three turns in front. Sorry, two or three turns on the material to hold it into place. Lift up your waist end. Get two or three turns in behind there. What I'm going to do next is just remove my waist at the front here. Excuse my fingers. And I'm going to have to have two goes at that one. So I'm just going to come in for the other side. The way I've got my light axe, it's quite difficult when I put my fingers there. Uh, so that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to ease that around the CDC. And it's super buoyant stuff, this, especially after uh, you've treated it with floatant. Now, that's looking pretty good. And I'm just making myself a little bit more room by pulling my thread back. Now, before I go on, I'm going to add a little bit of wax to this because the overwing, as you've seen, was deer hair. And I've got the deer hair I'm using here. Uh, you need about, I'm going to show you here because I've already stacked it. 
uh, I take about this much not much it's it's not a lot but I cut that and I put it in my stacker and the reason uh, I've done it pre-stacked is I didn't want to bang the Black & Decker workbench that I'm uh, using currently for my fly tying station because uh, uh, it moves the vise and uh, obviously doesn't look too good on the camera so I've stacked it already and hopefully I've done it right and when I take it out the stacker there's the tips waiting for me there so I'm going to come in with my thumb and forefinger in my left hand and just remove from the stacker and then any dead ends or loose loose bits in the tips you can remove that and again what we're going to do this time is dress up our deer hair and this time I want it to come just past the ultra dry yarn and probably just slightly past the CDC so I've measured that up and that looks pretty good so I'm going to transfer it once more and just over my little waist bin here I'm going to remove the waste. So I know now when I dress that up to the hook and bring my thread over just in a loose pinch and turn initially I'm going to let go and have a look. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So again I'm going to hold on. Usually I would just um, not have let go there and trusted that I had it right but Obviously when I'm doing a video I don't want to finish this and then find it's not right so I just had to have a wee look there. Usually I wouldn't bother. Then come through your cut ends and once you start getting all the cut ends out of the way you can start to clamp down a little bit harder on your deer here. Now with the Beavis thread you have got to be careful of course that you don't clamp down so much as that you start cutting into the deer hair. So that's looking not too bad at the moment. Now, as it's a dual fly and primarily used for fishing the nymph, I want to add a sighter. And again, I've got some fish on ultra dry yarn and pink here. And I don't need, and I've already combed this out, don't need too much of it. It does stand out really well on the water. But everybody's different. You know, some people like orange. I'm just, uh, my eyes are attuned more to the pink. So I've got a little, a few strands of it. I'm going to dress it up like so. Just catch it in at the eye. And then I'm going to fold it over. And then I can just secure it into place. A few turns. And then you can trim what you don't need. Doesn't take much, really. It's amazing how small it can be for it to stand out on the water as it does. But, uh, you know, when you're fishing duo, the idea is that you've got two takeable flies. And fish do come and take this. So to finish off then, I'm going to just uh, let my thread go anti-clockwise. And again, I've got a tiny little bit of the scruffy dubbing, which I've taken in my fingers. And I'm going to get my needle, come in behind and split my thread. Now the Vivas is great for this. There's never any hassle with it. Even for a blind old coot like me, I can still split this no problem. Then I can feed up my bit of scruffy dubbing and then spin the whole thing up. Now obviously there's uh, far too much dubbing in this, so with my fingers I'm just simply going to tease out some of the fibres that I don't want. Just like my thumb and forefinger, bring everything back out the way. And then work it all the way to the eye of the hook. Now you don't want to come in afterwards and try and 
uh, finish this off with varnish. So what I like to do is add a little bit of UV resin. To my thread. And then I can come in with my quick finish tool. Make sure all that material is back out of the way. You don't want to fill your eye with resin either. So just be careful how much you use. And you can take that away with your scissors. Don't forget to cure it off. And you can titivate up any little strands. And what if you watch uh, my videos where a lot of my dry flies, I like to just add, while I'm at the vice stage, some Muslin dry fly silicon. Just saves a little bit of time and effort when you're at the water. You can, uh, you know, once you've finished tying this and treating it, you can set this to the side and once it's all nice and dry, you can get it in your dry fly box. Then when you turn up to fish, there's no messing. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you got something out of that. Uh, if nothing else, you'll save a bit of money for buying split rings. Just use a little bit of tippet. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please don't forget to click that button. Your support's really appreciated.